Good afternoon. I think we still have music. We're finishing. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to a new week, a bright sunny day here in North Carolina. So yay. It's actually halfway decently warm considering it's the end of January. I'll take it. Anyway, um, so last week we spent all week talking about when we should spay and neuter our pets, dogs and cats, or if we should leave them intact. And um, if you didn't see those lives from last week, I, they're still on the page, they're on YouTube, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. I strongly recommend going back and watching them if you have any questions or concerns about whether you should be spaying or neutering your dogs and cats. There are so many reasons, especially for dogs, that leaving them intact is so much better for their health. And we looked at a lot of studies last week from countries in Europe that do not routinely spay and neuter their dogs and cats. So um, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, a lot of those countries leave their animals intact, which is great because it gives us a large population of animals to study and to look at statistics on pyometra, uh, mammary gland tumors, anal gland tumors, prostate disease, prostatic tumors, testicular tumors. So we have lots of really good information in those blogs so or in those videos. So we also made blogs to go along with each one of those videos. So there is a blog on sterile sterilization options for females. And it talks about the different ways that you can st sterilize your female without doing a complete spay so that you can leave those hormones intact, which can make a huge difference in the life of your dog. On Tuesday, we talked about, or maybe it was the other way around. But anyway, we also talked about sterilization options for male dogs and reasons why you might want to leave your male dogs intact. Now, I get a lot of pushback from uh, rescue organizations, adoption organizations, and that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, complaining that by not recommending sterilization across the board that we are contributing to overpopulation. Well, the thing is, what we are doing is talking to the responsible pet owners who are going to make responsible decisions based on the health of their pet. We are not talking to the general public that allows their pets to run at large, that allows their pets to be breeding all over the place and having unwanted litters. That's a very different scenario. So what we want to do is educate people on what is best for your pet if you're a responsible pet owner. So in our male dog blog, we also looked at sterilization options that do not include removing the testicles, which removes the hormones. So there are ways that you can sterilize your pets so that you won't accidentally contribute to pet overpopulation but still keep the gonads intact and keep the hormones intact. So both of those blogs have a ton of information. Now on Thursday, we talked about kitty cats because cats are not small dogs. There are different sterilization options available for dogs or for cats as well. The problem is that our girl kitty cats really do like to make mammary cancer and it does seem to have a high correlation with them being intact. So we talk about cats in a totally different um light than we talk about dogs. So if you're a kitty cat owner and you have questions about whether you should spay or neuter your cats, then I would recommend either going back and finding the videos on our platforms from Thursday or looking at the blog on sterilization. And in these blogs, we gave tons and tons and tons of links to studies that talked about these different reasons why we want to leave ovaries or testicles in place. Now, here's the problem for all of you responsible pet owners, because a lot of responsible pet owners also love to do rescue work, love to adopt animals from shelters. And the thing is, you're probably not going to get a rescue animal out of a shelter, out of a 
a rescue adoption situation without it coming to you already spayed and neutered. So on Friday, we talked about things that you can do to support your animals who have already been sterilized and already had their gonads removed. So we also have a blog on that supporting spayed and neutered pets. So you might want to look at that if you did adopt an animal or if you weren't aware of as like I was not aware of all the different options and all the studies showing the reasons why we should leave hormonal input in place. So the problem is, and I ran into this in my practice because in the last 10 years of my practice, we were moving more and more and more toward being more holistic. And so we were asking our clients who were responsible if they wanted to leave their males and females, particularly dogs, intact for a longer period of time. And for the kitty cats, we were trying to wait until they were about a year of age instead of doing that pediatric spay and neuter or that six month old spay and neuter. So the problem comes in. So let's say you already adopted one that came spayed or neutered. Well, you can't reverse that, but you can support them. So we have ways to do that. Um, but let's say you have an intact male or an intact female, cat, dog, whatever, in your home and you want to adopt another animal. And so you go to your local shelter or you go to an adoption event and you see an animal that breaks your heart and you just say, this one has to come home with me. I cannot live without this animal. And you put in your shelter or adoption group application and the first thing they say is, we're going to do a vet check. Well, most of them. Some of them do not. So maybe we need to, not that they're as responsible, but maybe, maybe we need to look at the ones who don't even ask questions. But you found this animal that you really want to adopt. The chances of getting it away from them, unspayed or unneutered, are pretty slim. So you'll have to deal with that after the fact. You can ask, but good luck on that one. And I, I get where they're coming from. I am not saying anything against rescue organizations. I'm just saying good luck getting them out of there unspayed or unneutered. And we found that with our local shelter in New Jersey that was a mile away from our clinic. We did a lot of work for them and people that adopted animals, even if they prepaid for spay and neuter, only a third of them brought them back and had the spay and neuter done. So um, not very good statistics. So I get where the shelters are coming from. However, even if you are willing to say, okay, I really want to adopt this dog or cat, but I've got intact animals at home or I have unvaccinated animals at home, or I have animals that I don't vaccinate every year, but I do titers. Um, and the shelter or rescue organization says, nope, nope. That's a big red flag. You have unspayed, unneutered animals at home. You can't have an animal. You have unvaccinated animals at home. You can't have an animal. And the problem is that many, many, many of the rescue and shelter organizations are still operating under old beliefs, old beliefs that all animals get vaccines every year and that all animals must be spayed and neutered at six months of age. And so we dealt with this a lot in our clinic. And um, I don't know if Cheyenne Nieves is on today, but she was a client that I went to bat for. And it took a lot of talking and a lot of proof to get the rescue organization to adopt her little female dog to her. Um, she had a uh, Connie Corso at home and we were waiting for that dog to be fully mature before she was going to spay. So I can't remember how old Tonka was when she wanted to adopt Annie as a puppy. Annie's the cutest thing in the world. She's like a clumber spaniel basset cross, cute dog. Anyway, um, she wanted to adopt Annie and Annie was a young puppy. And so um, my client was very holistic. She did titers for her animals and she was waiting to spay her big dog. And as soon as she said that she had an unspayed female at home, the rescue group said, absolutely not. You cannot adopt one of our puppies. And so she kind of talked until she was blue in the face saying, no, here's the reasons why. Here's studies behind it. This is why I'm waiting. I really, really need to wait. My veterinarian supports this. My veterinarian is behind this. My veterinarian recommended this. There's no way my dog is going to be accidentally bred. Um, so 
I ended up having multiple conversations with the shelter people, writing multiple letters to the shelter people, and literally saying, you could not find a better home for this dog. And they could not have found a better home for this dog. So how do you get around this? She did end up getting Annie, which I'm so glad because Annie's like, she's one of my favorite patients, cutest little thing. Anyway, she's not so little now, but um, so it is, it is a problem for those of us in the holistic world. Now, when we just adopted Charlie, he came in through a rescue organization. They know me. They know what I am going to do. Charlie came in to the shelter already neutered. And when he hit the shelter, they hit him with every vaccine, every chemical, you name it. The poor guy had it. So that was already done. And we didn't have any say in that. They didn't know. Well, I guess the shelter sort of knew that I was going to be the one taking the dog in the long run, but they didn't do a vet check on me. They didn't ask, do I have unneutered animals at home, which I have an un unneutered male. Um, so they didn't come to me directly because we went through the rescue organization. But that's hard for the average pet owner. So how do you deal with that? So I'm going to give you a few tips that, that we managed. And the first thing that I would say is have a really, really good relationship with your veterinarian. Um, now, somebody said last week that some breeders are now putting in their contract that even though they want the dog to be sterilized uh, when it's sold and not to be used for breeding, they are putting in wording that's because it used to be that you had to do it by six months or 12 months. And some of them are now saying you cannot do it before three years of age. Wouldn't that be amazing? So if you purchase a dog through a breeder that has a contract like that, well, you could go to the rescue organization and say, hey, look, my breeder understands the importance of keeping hormones in place until this dog is fully grown. This is why I'm doing this. And this is what my plan is down the line. I plan on doing sterilization with ovary sparing spay or tubal ligation or vasectomy. Whatever your plan is, maybe you're planning on going ahead with a full spay or a full neuter when the dog has reached that age. If you have something like that, that you could show them that says, look, here's the reason why. Or if, like me with my client, if you have a really good relationship with your veterinarian, veterinarian who is supportive of you leaving your animals intact or intact for a longer period of time or using alternative methods of sterilization at a later date when they are finished their full growth cycle. If that veterinarian is willing to write a letter, make phone calls and support, that can be very, very helpful. Now, I did have rescue groups that I would jump through hoops and do all these things in the hopes that my client would be able to adopt and they would still say no. Some of them are unwavering on this, absolutely unwavering. And so the other area where you can run into trouble with rescue organizations is they do the vet check and they, they ask very simple questions. Is the pet up to date on vaccinations? So Judy Morgan wants to adopt a dog from me. What animals does she have? <clears throat> what animals does she already have? And then your veterinarian will list all the animals that or it's not even the veterinarian, it's the receptionist usually, who will say, well, let's see, uh, in the computer it shows she has 12 animals. Oh, wow. Well, that's too many. That's going to be your first thing. Then they're going to say, are all of those vaccinated, are, are all of those animals spayed and neutered? Then you get the yes or no from the receptionist. Then the next thing they're going to say is, are all of those animals up to date on vaccinations? Well, if you're like me, my indoor cats got a kitten vaccine and that's that. And actually now even my outdoor cats got a kitten vaccine and that's that. So if someone called and said, are your animals up to date on vaccinations? My answer would be, yes, they are. Because from my viewpoint, they are up to date on vaccinations. However, if you go to a traditional practice and that's not their belief. They are going to report that your animals are not up to date on vaccinations. So what I would recommend is that if you're like me and you don't want to vaccinate your animals every single year because there's really no reason to do that, I would love to, I, I originally was going to recommend that you go to the AHA and AVMA and AAFP, which is the feline practitioner's websites and look at what they recommend for vaccinations and print that out and take it to your veterinarian. Well, 
they still recommend over vaccination. Um, for adult animals, they do recommend not giving core vaccines, which is rabies, distemper, adenovirus, and uh, parvo. Um, and for the cats, it's um, uh, FERCP. Um, they are recommending those for adults every three years. They recommend way too many kitten and youngster vex or kitten puppy and youngster vaccines, but they at least say every three years. So if your animals have had a vaccine within three years, you can say, no, they're up to date. Look at the guidelines right here, say this. Um, unfortunately, some uh, rescue organizations are still under the belief that animals need to be vaccinated every year. If you're having titers done, you may get lucky and have a rescue group that says, oh yeah, we accept titers. That's proof that you know your animal is protected. So maybe that would work. My strong recommendation is take every one of your animals into your veterinarian once a year, at least, for a complete physical exam, get some lab work run, get a stool sample run, get your heartworm test run for your dogs, and say, no, my animal's under veterinary care. My animal gets preventative care every year. And your veterinarian can't refute that. And then it's kind of up to whether your veterinarian is supportive of titers or reduced number of vaccinations. So if you, can, if you have a holistic veterinarian that you work with, that's a lot easier. A uh, member in your group had her vet refuse to do a dental without giving a kennel cough vaccine last week. Yeah, this is so stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, so in the... Um, the blog links that we posted, there are a lot of studies in there that have information on the benefits of leaving animals intact. So um, you can at least send some of those studies to people who are arguing with you about this. Um, but it's, this is a difficult place to be if you really have a big heart and you're wanting to bring more animals into your household, but you have different belief system than what the rescue organizations do. Best thing I can say is try to kill them with kindness, be really nice about it and say, well, the animal that I'm trying to adopt from you is already spayed or neutered. So clearly this one will not be used for breeding. It will not be bred. Wow. You just gave this pet all of its vaccines or its vaccine series. If it's a puppy or kitten, he's up to date. I think we're good. And I promise I will bring them into the veterinarian every year for annual exams. And then I will work with my veterinarian to determine what is necessary for this animal on an annual basis. So if you get really argumentative with them, forget it, you're never getting that animal. If you try to be really nice about it and then have veterinary staff that are willing to work with you. And if you are trying to adopt an animal um, through a rescue organization or shelter that you know is going to call the veterinary office to do a veterinary check, call the office, give them a heads up and say, look, they really want to see that my animals are vaccinated every year. They want to see that everybody is spayed and neutered. You know why I do things the way I do. You know the kind of care that I take of my animals. I'm begging you, will you please give me a good recommendation. Will you please tell them that I am a phenomenal pet owner, that they couldn't find a better home for this animal. Um, I once had a rescue organization refuse to allow me to adopt because they said I had too many animals. Yeah, we have 45-ish. I don't even know. Um, somewhere in the mid 40s. Uh, and they all get phenomenal care. So it's, Every individual has a different capacity. Yes, there are people who hoard. Yes, there are people who have too many animals and they cannot care for them. Um, don't be one of those people. But just because you have more than one doesn't mean that you're not a good pet owner. So this is a this is tricky. This is really tricky um, for those of you who are trying to bring new souls into your household and you are having to do the uphill trudge. But um, like my client, I haven't seen her on here today, but she really wanted to adopt Annie. She, they, they had lost their other dog and they really wanted a second dog. And she was very, very politely persistent. Um, and we, we managed to, to triumph and get the dog that she wanted. So, um, sometimes 
that's kind of what it takes. Um, Gene Dodds has a vaccine protocol online. You could print that out as well. Um, some people don't like things that that Gene has to say either, so they may or may not take that. They may only take things from a veterinary organization. Um, I think Gene's protocol has more vaccines than I would want to use, but it's definitely better than what we see from other organizations. So um, rescues, we have some awful ones here who are fraudulent. Uh, I know a lot of fraudulent rescues, a lot. They should not be in business. Anyhow, um, so the last blog that we did, oh, I talked about that, is uh, how to support your um, pets if they have been spayed or neutered. So that was from Friday. And then um, the last thing I'd like to mention is our hospice and palliative care course, which is now available. Uh, there's a link to it, and I would strongly recommend checking it out. There is just so much information in that course. If you have senior animals, if you um if you do foster care for senior animals, if you are in the pet profession, whether you're a veterinarian, vet tech, animal walker, animal sitter, caregiver, so, so, so much information in there. So I would strongly recommend just go to the link, check it out, see what it offers. Um, I think that you will be really happy if you decide to participate in that course. Um, okay. Hopefully this helps you guys. I, I wish I had some clear cut. Absolutely. This is going to get you that dog you want to adopt or that cat you want to adopt. Um, I don't, um, back in the day, uh, when we were still declawing all the cats, uh, our local shelter had one person who was really against declawing cats. This was 25 years ago when it was still really common to declaw cats. And so when they did a vet check, the first, or when person filled out the application, the first thing they'd say, if they want to adopt a cat, is your cat, do you have cats at home? Yes. Are they declawed? Yes. You don't have a cat. They would not let anyone adopt a cat if they had a declaw cat at home. Now we know better now we don't declaw anymore. Well, some people still do, but I don't. And all my, all my cats have all their weapons, um, which I believe that they need. So, um, you know, we went through that for a lot of years as well. And in that case, instead of re-educating the shelter, we had to re-educate the clients on why it was really important to allow our cats to have all their weapons. So that's a story for a different day. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful afternoon. Um, I don't know what we have going on the rest of the week, but I know that the raw pet medics will be on tomorrow at two o'clock on our page. So, and they're doing a Q and A, so you can um, post your questions for them and that'll be a lot of fun. The, they're kind of a lot of fun. We'll be live tomorrow at four. Oh, I will be live tomorrow at four. What am I doing? Oh, with a pet communicator. Awesome. I don't know about everybody else, but I think pet communication is like the coolest thing ever, ever. So cool. All right, everybody have a wonderful afternoon.